let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Greetings to all of you in the name of the risen Lord, Jesus Christ, who has promised Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Comforter. And today the topic is waiting upon the Holy Spirit. Waiting upon the Holy Spirit. And four lessons were read. And I do not know how many of you have noticed in all these four passages that were read to us, we find the term wait, wait, wait. Even in the Old Testament passages, they that wait upon the Lord, wait on the Lord. And in the New Testament passages, it is Jesus saying, both the passages, we find Jesus saying, stay in Jerusalem until you are clothed from power on, from on high. Stay till you receive the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit shall come upon you, you shall receive power. That's what we found in book of Acts chapter 1. So waiting. None of us would like waiting, waiting, waiting. Though sometimes we are forced into it. It has both negative effect. There is negative effect of waiting. When we are made to wait at the signal, at several points of signal, how do you feel? Very tiresome. Irritating sometimes. We are not able to go and reach the place of work or reach the place we, we intended and get things done quickly. So, what about waiting in the railway station because there is delay of the train or waiting at the airport because the flight is delayed? How do we feel at that time? Sometimes because of the delay, because of some fault in the engine, mechanical fault, we are made to sometimes in some places we are accommodated in some, a few hotels and wait, only catch the flight next day. How, how do you find that experience? Sometimes depressing also. So, these waitings are, in, when these kinds of waitings are imposed upon us, we are not happy about it, the negative effect of waiting. At the same time, there is also positive effect. Students had written their exams in the month of March and waited for the result. Plus two or ten standard, they waited for their results, waiting for the result. And on that day, there is joy, having waited. And, or somebody applies for a job, waits for the appointment order, waiting. And, for example, a married woman has to wait till she delivers the baby for nine or ten months. Can she hurriedly say, no, I want my child within five months? What would happen? Or seven months? Premature baby or stillborn, the condition would be worse. She has to wait. And that is why Jesus himself said in John chapter 16, let me read to you a few verses from the scripture. John chapter 16, verses 20 and 21, where Jesus himself says, Truly I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow, pain, because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish, the pain, the labor pain that she had underwent. For joy that a human being has, born, has been born into the world. Waiting, waiting. And how many of us are used to waiting, wait for the food to be cooked properly? If hurriedly we want something on our table, then half-baked, half-cooked, half-boiled, what would happen to our health condition? We have to wait, even in the restaurants. So waiting is inevitable sometimes. 
we have to wait and therefore in the passage that was read to us from the gospel portion let me read to you verses 48 and 49 of Luke chapter 24 from the gospel portion and behold you are my witnesses of these things and behold I am sending the promise of my father upon you but stay in the city wait stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high again listen to what Jesus says in John book of Acts chapter 1 the passage that was read to us instead of the epistle portion verse says 4 and 5 for while staying with them Jesus ordered them not to depart he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem but to wait for the promise of the father which is said you heard from me the promise of the father you heard from me but for John baptized with water but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now not many days from now so Jesus after his resurrection did not immediately send the Holy Spirit according to Luke's version why I say Luke's version Luke book of Acts was written by Luke so it is second Luke actually the first Luke gospel the second Luke is the book of Acts and therefore here we find that wait wait only on the 50th day after his resurrection 40 days he appeared to the disciples on the 50th day that which is called the Pentecost day the Holy Spirit descended upon the disciples as recorded in the second chapter of the book of Acts that's what we find so waiting so biblical waiting what does biblical waiting tell us biblical waiting tell us that we need to wait with trust and patience with trust and patience waiting requires trusting in the Lord who has promised that he would fulfill his promise if you don't have trust in the Lord then how can you wait if you do not trust the word of the Lord it directly came from the mouth of our Lord Jesus Christ you will not be interested in waiting and therefore trust comes first and then patience or endurance that is why we were made to sing the chorus he picked me, picked me up from the miry clay and put me on the rock to stay do you know where do you find where you find that verse in the scripture chapter 40 psalm 40 psalm 40 let me read to you in psalm 40 verses 1 to 4 i waited patiently for the lord he inclined his ear to me and heard my cry he drew me up from the pit of destruction out of the miry bog he picked me up from the miry clay and then set my feet upon a rock making my step secure and put me on the rock to stay put me on the rock to stay and he put a new song in my mouth a song of praise to our God that's what we read and verse 4 of the same psalm blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust blessed is the person who makes the Lord his trust who does not turn to the proud to those who go astray after life so we are called to wait in the passage that was read to us as the old as the psalm responsive reading psalm 27 in that psalm 27 how does the psalm begin the lord oh the song the psalm of david the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the lord is the stronghold of my life of whom shall I be afraid? The psalmist puts his, puts his trust in the Lord, who is the stronghold of his salvation, light and salvation, and the stronghold of his life. And then how does it conclude? Verse 14 of the same Psalm 27. Wait for the Lord, be strong, and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. Wait, wait for the Lord. Be strong. Let your heart take courage and wait for the Lord. That's what he promises. And again, in the Psalm 37, 
we find Psalm 37 from beginning at verse 3 trust in the Lord and do good dwell in the land and be befriend faithfulness delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart commit your way to the Lord trust in him and he will act commit your ways to the Lord trust in him and God will act that's what we find in Psalm 37 also there are so many passages so trusting requires um, sorry waiting requires trust and patience trust and patience and again in, in the Paul's letter to Romans chapter 5 Paul uses the term endurance verse 3 more than that we rejoice in our sufferings Romans 5 3 knowing that suffering produces produces endurance endurance produces character and character produces hope and hope does not that hope does not put us to shame because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit which has been given to us unless you have this love of God poured into your heart by the Holy Spirit you cannot love others as God loves each and every one of us we must imitate the love of God when we show love to others we must because God has set a model and also given us the Spirit poured into our hearts the Holy Spirit the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit and Therefore, you and I need to imitate the love of God. So, biblical waiting requires trust and patience. That is why we sang the chorus also. Trust in the Lord and don't despair. He is a friend so true. No matter what your troubles are, Jesus will see you through. Sing while the day is bright. Sing through the darkest night. Trust in the Lord and don't despair. Because he is a friend so true. No matter what your troubles are, Jesus will see you through. Biblical waiting with trust requires trust and patience. And secondly, waiting on the Lord, God, reminds us that God is in control. He knows the best. We may not know the future, but he knows the future. And therefore, he knows which is best for you and me. And therefore, let us leave everything in the hands of God. And waiting on God reminds us that God is in control. And therefore, how we need to wait? If you are certain, if you are sure that God is in control of everything, he has the handle for everything. You are not ha having the handle. But he has the handle. And then you will have to wait prayerfully. Prayerfully. And that is why Jesus said, go and wait. And how did the disciples wait? According to book of Acts chapter 2, they gathered. Chapter 1 itself, we find they went and spent time in prayer in that upper room. As Luke has recorded from verse 12. Verse 12. Then they returned to Jerusalem, the disciples, and then Verse 13, when they had entered, they went up to the upper room where they were staying and then the names are given. And verse 14 says, all these with one accord were devoting themselves to prayer together with women. How many people were there? Verse 15 says, there was about 120. 120 people gathered together in the upper room and spent time in prayer waiting for the Holy Spirit to come knowing that God is in control of everything. He will handle everything. And therefore, we must, if we are waiting people, waiting for God to intervene, waiting for God to act, we must trust God that, and remember that God is in control. Waiting on God reminds us that He is in control. Let me turn to an Old Testament passage from the book of Habakkuk. 
were the prophet in chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 of book of Habakkuk chapter 2 verses 1 to 3 where he says I'm sorry <coughs> I will take my stand at my watch port and station myself on the tower, writes the prophet Ahavakuk, and look out to see what he will say to me and what I will answer concerning my complaint. Have we come here with so many complaints? Listen to what the prophet says. And the Lord answered me, write the vision, make it plain on the tables, so he may run, so he may run who reads it. Make it plain on the tablets, I'm sorry. Make it plain on the tablets so that he who run may reach it. For still the vision awaits its appointed time. Still the vision awaits its appointed time. It hastens to the end. It will not lie. It seems slow. If it seems slow, wait for it. Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. This is the word of the Lord through the prophet Habakkuk. He says, wait, wait, because God knows which is the best time to offer, which is the best time to give. The disciples were made to wait till 50 days. 50th day only the Holy Spirit descended, not immediately after resurrection. 50 days they had to wait. Though John writes, he breathed on them. John in chapter 20 writes, he, Jesus breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. It was only a promise which was fulfilled on the Pentecost day, Sunday. Pentecost day. So, if you, if you trust the Lord, you will always be certain that God knows which is best and the best time to operate. When Lazarus was sick, it was, the messenger was sent to Jesus who was in Jerusalem. Lazarus was sick at Bethany. But Jesus delayed. Delayed. Did not go. After four days of his burial only, he said, my friend Lazarus is sleeping, I'm going to wake him up. Funny, isn't it? My friend Lazarus is sleeping, I'm going to wake him up. And the disciples, he's dead, why are you saying he's sleeping? Yes. Death for a believer is only a sleep. And therefore he went there, even after four days he said, Lazarus, come out. He delayed, wantonly delayed, in order that people may believe that he has the authority over death. And he, there only he said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will not die, and those who have died will be raised. That is what he had promised at that time. So, the I am saying, the seventh I am saying in the book of John, Gospel according to St. John. Jesus knows when to act. Jesus knows when to act. You know, a ruler of the church by name Jairus went to Jesus and said, my daughter is very critically ill. Why don't you rush up to my house along with me? I'll make all the transport arrangements. But Jesus said, no, I'll walk. Then you remember a woman with, who was suffering with an issue of blood touched the hem of Jesus' garment. There he got delayed and asked, who touched me? And then the woman came and shared her witness, all these things. Things got delayed. And therefore immediately Jairus' friends came and reported there was no telephone facility or internet facility to immediately communicate and therefore came and said, your daughter is dead, don't disturb him. What is the point of making him come to her home? Is he going to say a prayer, that's all? Why unnecessarily drag him? Leave him. But Jesus said, do not be afraid, be a man of faith. Do not be afraid, trust me. And Jesus went and raised the daughter saying, Talitha kumi. Delay. 
delays are not denials delays are not denials and then he knows when to act he knows how to act what is the best time to act beloved trust in the lord and don't despair so waiting on god remains that he is in control and then waiting for the holy spirit god spirit holy spirit is god spirit is to get our strength renewed to receive power from on high why to receive power from on high listen to the old testament reading of the, according to isaiah chapter 40 that was the portion that was read to us the old testament was 30 31 but those who wait for the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles and start flying they shall mount up with wings like eagles and start flying and they shall run but they will not become tired they shall walk and will not faint that's the promise they that wait upon the lord shall get their strength renewed isn't that a good promise for you and me to hold on even while we are weak our strength will get renewed if we wait upon the lord wait for the lord so uh, getting our strength renewed and at the same time listen to what jesus says in acts chapter 1 verses 4 and 5 while staying with them he ordered them not to depart from jerusalem commanded them but to wait for the promise of the father which he said you heard from me so the holy spirit will come upon you and in the gospel lesson of luke chapter 24 verse 49 and behold i am sending the promise of my father upon you but stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high until you are clothed with power from on high you don't have the power now that is required to preach the gospel to be my living witnesses of redeem my redeeming love you don't have that power you don't have the power to cast out demons you don't have the power to heal the sick wait wait you will be empowered the power will come from on high that's the promise so power he said i will give you power so trusting in god with patience and then knowing that god is in control and he will he knows the best he knows the future he knows when to act and how to act so i will wait not only patiently but also prayerfully not waiting passively but by active participation through intercession and prayer it's not waiting passively but through active participation by prayer and intercession only then god will intervene and act so hopefully expectantly and prayerfully we need to wait because we are living in the midst of impatient cultural people impatient culture our culture today's culture is impatient we want immediately everything immediately instant instantly instant coffee instant sambar yes and we want money also immediately that is why we have atm any time money you we can't wait till monday to give to write a check and draw from the bank we need, all of us would be having atm cards isn't it why we live in an impatient culture we want everything instantaneously immediately when patience is the test of character as i read from roman chapter 5 3 patience is the test of one's character remember so now power from on high it is not man power or muscle power or money power today power is being bought 
not caught even in all the elections you might have heard power is being bought not caught if you have money you can come to power even in the churches because we are going to have 14th bishop selection election and then goes to the synod for selection so money power muscle power all these powers would be exercised and political power how many mlas do you have how many mps do you have political power so how many supporters you have in the church in the diocese at the diocesan level or at the higher level at the synod then you are sure to get power here jesus promises i am not referring to such kind of power power from on high power from above how many of us are sure that we have power from on high to lead us to guide us to motivate us and make us act as samuel shoemaker a british theologian samuel shoemaker a british theologian said unless there is within us that which is above us unless there is within us that which is above us we shall soon yield to that which is around us we shall soon yield to that which is around us that means we yield to the temptations of the world the devil and the flesh why because we don't have power within us unless there is within us that which is above us we shall soon yield to that which is around us isn't that true about some of us or most of us why do we yield to temptation why do we fall into sin why we why do we commit so many irregular unwanted things that are not pleasing in the sight of god it is because we don't have power inside power inside and finally let me conclude we need to receive power and get our strength renewed as the prophet isaiah said finally let me conclude with this in waiting as a purpose uh, let me read to you verse 8 of book of acts chapter 1 you will receive power when the holy spirit shall come upon you no doubt you will be empowered and you will be my witnesses in jerusalem judea and samaria and to the ends of the earth the purpose of empowering you with the holy spirit supply you power from on high is only to make you a witness witness for the redeeming love of god witness for the salvation of god and that is why jesus before his ascension also said as we found in the gospel lesson 47 luke 24 verse 47 and 48 and that repentance and forgiveness of sin should be proclaimed in the name of all nations beginning from jerusalem you are witnesses from Jer you are witnesses of these things so it is to make you and me a witness only when we have tasted the love of god only when we have experienced the salvation of god we can say to others unless and until we experience how can we tell others about the salvation of god about the forgiveness of god beloved on this day we are called to wait to see power from on high in order to become powerful witnesses for the lord after having tasted his love his redemption his forgiveness his salvation and we need to be witnesses not only through our lips but also through our lives by what we say what we do how we act how we react our behavior our lifestyle everything must be according to the teachings of christ everything must be according to the teachings of the word of god not to deviate from that not to do what we want not to do what we like but seeking the will of god the purpose of god for our lives so that we could fulfill only his purpose not our likes and dislikes and therefore 
power god is ready to give us power that power will make you and me to be that power will make you and me to be what his purpose intends us to be what his purpose intends us to be or in other words to put it negatively the power of god will not make us to be what the purpose of god does not intend us to be let me repeat what i have said the power of god will not make us to be what the purpose of god does not intend us to be god says i will give you power to preach and to teach bible teacher yes lord thank you so the purpose of god is not for me to be a divine healer to perform miracles god has not that's not the purpose of god i must realize my limitation i must recognize discern the purpose of god and knowing my limitation i must stop with my preaching and teaching i should not say i am going to conduct healing crusade i want thousands of people to gather no god has not given me that power so the the power of god will not make me to be what the purpose of god does not intend me to be and therefore we have come here i am sure most of us or even all of us would be having our cell phones mobile am i right okay but every day you get the batteries of your cell phone charged the battery of your cell phone gets charged isn't it or else battery becomes weak has weak therefore immediately let me plug into the power supply and today we have come to the church sunday after sunday we come to the church do you know why to get our spiritual batteries recharged or else we'll be leaving the church because we have traditionally participated in the worship service following the tradition the it, it has become a ritual and without getting our spiritual batteries recharged if you are leaving the church today what is the use there is no difference between you and me and those who go to the temples into temples and go to the mass or go to the other religious shrines we have come here to get our spiritual batteries recharged wait upon the lord and he sh- your strength will be renewed he shall renew your strength wait upon the lord he shall empower you with the holy spirit are we ready to leave the church with our spiritual batteries recharged today beloved let us pray lord we thank you for speaking to us through the written word of the scripture and through the spoken word of the message we thank you lord for enabling us to see ourselves as we really are how spiritually weak we are how spiritually invalid we are we are not able to say no to the flesh no to the world no to the devil we we'll, wheel to the pressures from outside from around us unless there is within us that which has which comes from above the power that comes from above unless we are clothed with that power we are unable to say no lord forgive us for our failures help us to be filled with the spirit of god waiting upon the spirit get our spiritual batteries recharged this morning before we leave the church so that we could be what you intend us to be we could achieve great things for god attempt great things for god and achieve great things for god according to your plan according to your will send us with your blessings and power in jesus name we ask amen